My name is Ramsey, and welcome back to Curse of the Dead Gods. Heart Seekers, plus 50% damage taken whenever I have my main weapon out. There's also a barbed shield here, as well as a stiff bow. Yeah, I don't know about that one. War Makana, charge attack seal, critical damage. Also plus 20% on critical damage. Also extra base damage by point of dex. There's also a shield to parry with and a javelin that uh, weakens our enemies. Hmm. I think we go with the War Makana. Try and use the charged attacks a little more commonly than I otherwise might. Um... I feel like I've been using the same combo for a really long period of time. In five decks at the start of exploration, any perfect dodge triggers haste. I do like that. I do like perfect dodging. Uh, Will of Sashal. I mean, you know, you either go money or you go blood. Serpent Bounty. Favorite Sashal. Yeah. Clever kills. Also no on that one. Resolve 50% max health. Eh, no, not on that. Um, your physical attacks, non-elementary, have a 50% chance to turn into fire attacks. Fire attacks can be bad in one specific way against a certain boss. Uh, gain five constitution at the start of exploration. One constitution for each room you begin if your health is below 50% of its maximum. I like the idea of having another scaling kind of situation. But I don't like the idea of it being triggered by being on low HP. Uh, killing a weakened enemy spreads the effect. Successful parries. No, I think I... I think I will stick with what I currently have. I'm not certain this represents inflexibility. I mean, look, it definitely represents inflexibility in a way, right? Let's, let's get that out at the very start. But also, I did select them because they are things that I think work extremely well together. I mean, I should just cycle around them up here. Things that I think work extremely well together and a play style that I really, really enjoy. You know, what it could do is just get an upgrade to two-handed weapons and then just, you know, get a re-rolled weapon set here instead of specifically using the War Makana. Hmm. But I think this is going to force me to use the charged attack of a sword more commonly than I otherwise might. Um, and... Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, and it'll incentivize me using the offhand combo with it a lot more commonly. Because I can spin in and then just push someone away. If it looks like they are about to respond to me in any fashion. Okay. So the next we go to is the Serpent Temple. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. There are a lot of Addies here. It's a fun new way I say attributes. What do you think? Hell of a lot of them. Really keen. Really deeply, desperately keen. Excited. Very excited. Incredibly, desperately excited. It uh, represents the ability to pick up a bunch of constitution... I'm kidding. Obviously, it represents the ability to get a bunch of decks and a bunch of pe uh, perception. I don't care if I'm a glass cannon. If I'm a glass cannon and I die as a result of it, you know what that means? It means I've got to get better at dodging. That's what that means. Or parrying. Or both. Por que no los dos? And then you go down, and then you get back up. Unfortunately, because I didn't expect the enemy was actually going to go down from the, uh, the previous affect. Hang on. I'm going to take the gold there, actually. Just because we're going to get exceedingly little golds in this uh, whole area, but I don't know. Maybe there's a world where I get enough gold to actually buy the stats outright. That's really annoying. The enemy did a charge attack that makes them unhittable, and as a result, while 
I moved directly through them. I did not damage them, and therefore I lost my greed kill counters. I definitely can't buy anything now. <sighs> yeah, I want both of those. You got me, game. You got me. I mean, I could have gone to the other weapon, right? Just giving myself the opportunity to go to anywhere afterwards, but I'm guaranteed going down the left path, so I don't really think I have to entertain the idea of diversifying later on. I will say, these are very, very slow kills. This weapon isn't actually dealing... Uh, I think the word I'm looking for here is damage. I saw that happening the entire time. I had no way to stop it. Okay, so the shield bash does not stagger an enemy. Three perception there. I... It, uh, <laughs> my heart breaks for this opening. It, it really does. Um, Crippling bow isn't bad. I do just basically want to buy something. Get that perception. The only good thing about this opening so far is the fact that we have all of those stats up. Are you kidding me? This can actually re-roll the room. Okay, thankfully it didn't re-roll either the upgrade or the stats. But, ugh. You know? Just, ugh. Sometimes that's how it'd be, though. Right. Two, three, four. Nope. We're summoning, thank you. What do you got for us, friend? Hey, plus 20% base damage for swords. I am using a sword. That seems like that one's for me. Oh, wow. That is the first time, I think, in this series without, you know, another enemy. Or Ooh, plus 20% base damage for shields. That's also something I use. Um, I think that's the first time in this series without another enemy around causing me to do so that I uh, have missed the dodge on that specific attack. None of this had been good. Oh, this whole opening stinks. I can't even buy them. No greed kills. None. I'll be entirely honest. Like, there is a large part of my brain that's like... I want the run to die. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying my absolute best to be more resilient than that. But the whole thing about this build is it, like, sets itself up in the first half of the first floor. And if it doesn't do that, um, it dies? It's just another crippling bow. We already have one. Oh! No. And then charge that. Get that. And then. Boom! All works out in the end. Uh, no, I'm taking the money. Uh, I might have to take the money there as well. What do you have? Oh my god, I can't. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh my god. The only reason this line was good is constantly out of my reach because I cannot get together any greed kills. This is causing a deep pain to me. A deep and abiding pain. Look, this is a good opportunity to try and pick up some more greed kills. This is a exceedingly populous room. Combo off of one another. There we go. Finally, a well handled room. And an actual greed counter. <laughs> Removes the corruption per enemy kills. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, look, the War Makana is the only thing I can upgrade at this point. That is a pretty good upgrade for it as well. Not, 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 not sad about that one. It's only everything else, you see, that I am sad about. Oh my god, you are kidding me. Fine. I'll take some HP here because I'm just, I'm just terrified. I'm simply terrified. Just, oh, uh, huh. All right, uh, yeah, Torch darkness. I'm fine with that. I will remove the unknown rooms instead as a priority. Now, do we deal good damage? No. But that's okay. Because we also don't have good relics or stats. So it's okay, you see. <laughs> this is me trying to find the silver lining and uh, seeing nothing of the sort. I like that the offhand allows me to knock the enemy away so I don't have to worry about them responding after I get all up close and personal like that. Or at least I buy myself more room to dodge away from whatever their response should happen to be. My, my torch had lost all lighting properties, so obviously I wasn't going to be able to set the enemy on, uh, a light there. <laughs> Literally at the start of the room, it had lost that. Uh, yeah, get rid of the blurred vision there. That's a claw and a whip. Right, what's the whip? Hmm, kills make attacks deal critical damage for three seconds. Oh, you are kidding me. That's a really good dagger as well. Dagger, sorry, that's a really good claw. I'm going to turn both of these down. Unfortunately. God. I need to get a weapon. It needs to be really, really good. And then we upgrade it. Because right now, I have absolutely no plan for dealing with critical... Uh, critical. <laughs> Thinking about those, uh... Think about those crits! I have no plan for dealing with enemies that are elites and are just too big for me to damage. And due to the area we're in, we are going to need a plan for that.
Maybe instead of my normal play style of trying to single out and destroy an individual enemy, maybe how I have to play with the weapon set that I currently have is corral everyone, survive their hits, and then go through with a charged attack, knock them away or knock any surviving elements away with the offhand, and then try and re-engage. Abnegation is also a sword! Restores 2% of max health, reach enemy killed, and does 30% less damage whilst in light. So already have the plus 20% damage on this, right? Because it's a sword. Hmm. And we could upgrade it in the next room. Goes to level four. Let's do it. Let's do it. Unfortunately, it'll be dealing very little damage in this room. Oh no, I can't light that! Unfortunately, it'll be dealing very little damage in this room because the room is constantly alight. Oh my god. We deal so little damage. <laughs> ah. I'm a baby. Oh, I'm a sad baby. Well, oh. got him in the end. I'm not going to be able to upgrade this with the money, am I? No. The problem is, uh, because of that bad start, basically all of our blessings are invalidated. Like, they're not really doing anything for us. Or at least not enough to justify their own existence. And because of that, our scaling is... Uh, what? I wish we had scaling. And because of that, our damage is garbage, which means our fights are really long, which means there's a lot more opportunities for us to take damage, and it's also a lot harder for us to knock enemies out. There is so much of me that wants to invoke the mercy rule. And just be like, you know what? No, we're doing, doing another one. But I've spoken earlier in this series about resilience. Specifically about roguelikes teaching me uh, more resilience than I previously had. And I feel like it'd be a little, uh, a little antithetical to my point there. Should I now demonstrate a stunning lack thereof? You let me parry you. Okay, I tried to parry the enemy as they were flying through the air there. That one didn't work out too well. There you 
got. Get poisoned and get removed from the board. Uh huh. I'm going to take the plus 45% damage in darkness. I don't think I can do things unless I start picking up damage relics and I got to capitalize on darkness damage right now. I really have too many options right now. See, we do good damage if we're in complete darkness, at least. Uh, fine, we'll kill that. Yeah, we do good damage in darkness. All it took is uh, not having the negative 30% damage modifier on the abnegation, an upgrade on abnegation, plus 20% damage for swords, plus 45% damage in darkness. All it, all it takes is all of those stacking. So we should just do that more commonly, forehead. I didn't defend against the enemy that was far away there, because I just thought that if I did that spin attack, I was going to be too far from them to hit. Evidently, I was not correct in that assumption. Or in another sick environmental kill there. Plus 20% damage per active curse reaper. Yeah. Fine. Good offhand damage for us. I guess what I do then is I go for a relic here. And I look for something cursed... Or something that scales with having curse. Or if it helps pistols, that'd be really good too. Feels okay. Again, as soon as the lights go back on. Not so much, but right now, feels good. Hmm. Alright, knock down this wall for me. Thank you. Learning the weapon timings of things like the charged attack more closely. Ooh, another plus 20% damage of swords. I don't use shields anymore, so sure. I think we 10% the gold offering cost. I'm going to take the money there. Just because our relic slots are pretty competitive in terms of things that are just trying to help us out. Uh, turn the light off by striking it with a dark weapon. Just in case you didn't know. or uh, Sorry, not just in case you didn't know how to do that, but also just in case you didn't think I knew how to do that. <laughs> I do. I also just like to complain. That's not true, actually. <laughs> I don't stand by that. <laughs> And you go down. Beautiful. All right. What do you got for us? Interesting. Consume to 50%. Consume to uh, restore, sorry, 50% of max health when taking fatal blow. Uh, it is a cursed, cursed relic. But neither of these scale with cursed relics.
Hmm. Maybe the more curses you have, the more likely you're finding cursed relics. That seems likely here. Plus one level on your two-handed weapon. Oh, if that was... If, yeah, if that was any other form of weapon, I would take it. But it isn't. Each greed kill restores 1% of max HP. That's not too bad. Uh, we do need some healing somewhere in this build. There you go. So we still haven't gotten the final curse. We're dancing on the edge of it. We're about to remove one. Assuming we win the boss fight. Dodging no longer makes you intangible. But you don't get perfect dodge. Uh, sorry, hang on. Dodging makes you intangible, but you no longer trigger perfect dodges to restore stamina. And we also have maximum stamina reduced by one. Killing an enemy with any weapon restores two stamina points instead of one. Uh, our stamina is really in a bad place right now. Like exceeding like problem. Like, oh God. Uh-oh. That's the realm we're in. I would not be surprised for this boss to just kill me. I'm gonna have to try and focus on parries if I really wanna be able to do much here. I. There we go. I was about to say, I used to have the parry timings down for this. Oh my god. I'm waiting for him to get poison. No, looks like... Maybe he's just not doing that hit? No, he's doing it. Just a wee bit delayed. No. Not allowed. No. No. No! Got him. Told you I knew the timing. Okay. Uh, we, <laughs> I want to get rid of both of these. I got to get rid of Deadly Obsession, I think. 5% of critical damage also heals you. That's really good for us. Take that over the Constitution. Sure. Uh, uh, that's going to get eaten for the decks, definitely. We're going with the Cursed Weapon kind of situation here. Cursed Weapon run, if you will. Um... I think we have to try and go for a relic and find something. Something? Unfortunately, we're also in the length where if I do end up dying, it's not going to be time for another run to start. Alas, it happens. Thank you for destroying that wall for me. Lord, you need no damage. Wah! I didn't want that. How is it, despite? Uh, well, I know why it is. <laughs> Just feels like we need more damage really badly. The game's not giving it to us. Or rather, we lack the ability to take it. Unfortunately, because our damage is so low, we've got to make sure we kill healers first. Because I cannot out-DPS them.
Perfect. Whew. Um, I mean, I can't light that on fire, but I can just try and roll through it a bunch. Hmm. I'm not sure that was worth it. But at least it did demonstrate that no amount of poison ticks is going to ever take away my... Uh, excuse me. Just while I make sure that goes off well there. Um, yeah, no amount of poison ticks is ever going to take away my greed kill. Just wanted to quickly tag the enemy there for a second, get you hit some poison. And again, and again. Yeah, I'm having to use the environment to modify my damage a little bit. I'm not keen on it, but you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? <sighs> nope, none of these are gonna save me. I need, like, damage! Huh. Plus 9 dex as well as 45% of crits. If that ain't damage, I don't know what is. If that ain't damage, there's nothing that is. I'm probably not going to even buy weapons here. Uh, well, I mean, look, I get some, uh, some healing, but it is going to cost me a lot of my gold. All oh, right, we don't have perfect dodges anymore. That's why that didn't work to extend the barriers. Ow. Take a greed kill wherever I can get them. Still need the HP they provide. Remember what I said about having to target the healers first? Let's actually do that. Heal 6% of gold offering amount. I just have to take the instant healing on that one. Oh, God. Look at the enemy's HP. Look how slowly it decreases. I should be parrying those blades, by the way. I keep forgetting they are parryable. Like. Well, I failed the second one, but you see my point. <laughs> percent max hp there too i don't have the ability to upgrade my weapons to get me out of this i uh, parrying reflects projectiles no storm's points oh my god storm's points a good weapon here as well but i i, I just i just i can't i need to have money <laughs> otherwise i will have death Okay, that's... Well, you see, the thing is... Ow. The thing about that is... Uh-oh. I was trying to turn around and parry that. There we go. Okay. 
I'm not always using the offhand combo of the Reaper just because I do need a lot of the time it feels like the double damage from hitting it otherwise. Also, whenever Reaper crits, I'm healing, so... There's that, too. Uh, uh. Roll out of the way of that one, too. No. Got him in the end. Uh, passing the draw and flicks less corruption. We actually may need to have this. Damage, damage, damage. Ah, uh, health. Oof. Uh, I'm going to have to drop the herbs to rejuvenation for this. We use critical eye to keep our health up. And then that's 12% max HP. Yeah, okay, so it definitely seems like the more curse you have, the more offered cursed things you get. God, still to talents would have been really good. Um, we, yeah, we do have a relic upcoming. Oh, I would have to pay curse if I actually want to upgrade my weapon here, which gives us the final curse, and then suddenly... <sighs> Although maybe after that, I would find the relic that's like... Plus 50% to all of your everything? Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh my god. I even had the stamina there for the roll, but <laughs> Um one sec. One sec. What if I just played like super safe? Right? And only used Reaper shots. Stayed really far away from all of my enemies. Just healed the heck up off of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're on our way back to full HP already. That's so rude. That the enemy blocked my perfect there. I'm just gonna knock you back into a trap that's gonna augment our damage a little bit there. Yeah, there's a relic that just says plus 50 to all of your stats if you're under the effects of the final curse. Should be really nice. However. I mean, I'm moving through two more rooms anyway. I have no way to prevent myself currently from getting to the final curse other than looting things that will remove final curse me in the next two rooms. Maybe I just accept I'm going to get the final curse and I try and upgrade the damage of the Reaper and then try and use that to out heal. It's great. I don't think I have that many options left. <laughs> I think it's a, a do what you can kind of situation. Well, drops over time. Yeah, I know. And we will be focusing on using the Reaper for the aforementioned reason. Oh my god, I actually managed to get out of that. Whew. I was pretty scared. Uh, yeah, so I don't really care about fully navigating all of these rooms for all the gold and stuff like that. What I care about is just time, completion, speed. Well, got dead ended there. I was thinking that was going to be a different exit. Oh, 
go down. Uh, faction. Store some health there. I don't even know where this is trying to head now. What? Um. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I thought I'd been locked in a room that just was not going to be accessed anymore. I thought I'd almost soft locked myself there. Same plan I mentioned before. If we have no damage, we've got to get it somehow. And that'll do it for us. 12% nice HP there. Uh, I can't buy anything here. Plus 66 to all healing effects. And I've got the Eagle's Eye. I mean, Chimeric Shiver doesn't mean anything anymore, so sure. I don't know, maybe this Reaper plan is actually, like, something. The heal off of the Reaper's crits and be on the final curse plan in specific. It does enough damage to keep the enemies at bay. <laughs> More than I can say for most of my things. Oh, God. They got us there at the very end. Uh, No. Take some decks for refusing that. Uh, okay, look, if it's on my path, sure, I'll still have a look at that and then ultimately reject it. More than happy to have a look at that and then ultimately reject it. What do you got? 12% of a gold offering amount, but it heals 18% myself. We'll wait until the room is over to use that. Uh, actually, I'm making weekend enemies. Again, same. Wait until the room is over. Do it. I will take all of these stats. Let's see. Does life find a way? Can we still get this? Unfortunately, this is the fight where perfect rolls matter the absolute most to me. Excuse me. Uh, so to be deprived of them specifically here, where they account for like most of my stamina is not good. I'm gonna give that a capital NG for not good. It's unfortunate I need to keep doing the perfect hits as well. And also that the summons do not heal us. Come on. Gosh, I need to just stay further away. But if the further away I stay, the slower all of these kills are gonna be.
Sorry, I'm focusing really hard right now. I didn't think there was any chance that was going to hit me as I was walking away there. I wanted you to not dare. No, yeah. I I wanted to try and get that hit off as quickly as I possibly could so that I could return to the dark avatar of the serpent. Hey, for a run that was dying the whole time and that I was admittedly tilted on for <laughs> the vast majority, that got a lot further. Uh, yeah, honestly, I I'll tell you where I think I lost that. And it's when I removed not the rolling uh, penalty. It's when instead... I removed the killing enemies, lowers stamina. I, or rather, sorry, uh, you have a lower stamina by base and killing enemies gives you two stamina back. That's, that's when it really changed for us. Because without that, I think we actually would have taken that fight. It's just being deprived of so much stamina as I needed to be in and amongst the enemies to finish a target off for... You know, obviously the dodges against the Dark Avatar of the Serpent. Like, I'm, I'm costing myself two stamina every single rotation of the Dark Avatar of the Serpent. It's just real hard, but that gives us somewhere to go in the next episode for the moment. My name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game is Because of the Dead Gods. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. So I'll play the description down below with more content of the game, past, present, and future, and hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. And hopefully we'll see you next time.